Well, good morning today. I'm going to be talking about exercise and martial arts and Latin dance and things that I've learned over the years. I'm 66. And exercise and taking care of your body is very important and I've learned a lot over the years about the different types of exercise different types of supplements and different purposes of exercise that I have found to be very helpful and very enjoyable I've talked about my youth in Florida my dad was uh, ex-marine, fought in Korea, was a drill instructor for a time. So Saturday mornings, it was field day. That was our first exercise, field day. Let's get up and clean the house and clean the yard and do some chores. That was our exercise. In fact, <laughs> my brother John was in the Air Force uh, and he was in basic training in San Antonio and I was living in Houston that summer. I was studying at uh, the Ocean Corporation. I, I was studying deep sea diving, underwater demolition, and welding, and I wanted to be a commercial diver. So one day I drove to visit John in San Antonio, and he showed me around, and It was very structured. He had to walk a certain way and salute and talk a certain way and kind of surprising to me. But anyway, I asked him, you know, well, how, you know, how is this? How is basic training? You know, it's supposed to be rough. He goes, well, it's just like home. It's field day. It's, <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> that was my first, you know, my youth, my first uh, form of disciplined work, I guess you could call it. When I got older, there was older, you know, what, 14? We'd read comic books. That was really popular then. And we had a neighbor who read a lot of, he had a lot of comic books and he would give them to us, you know, all the superheroes and Richie Rich and Archie. And they had these advertisements with Charles Atlas. And uh, let's see, I think I have a picture of these advertisements. Charles Atlas. So it shows a cartoon of uh, the skinny kid with his girlfriend on the beach and a, a big guy says, hey skinny, your ribs are showing. And uh, he, uh, the bully, uh, pushes his uh, pushes this guy and the guy says uh, uh, shut up you bag of bones and the girlfriend says don't let him hit you Joe and Joe says watch what you say fella and then it, the next scene is darn it I'm tired of being a skinny scarecrow scarecrow 
Charles Atlas says he can make me a new man. I'll gamble a stamp and get my free book later. Boy, it didn't take long. What a build. Wow, I'll take care of that bully. And then the next scene, he's on the beach, punching the bully. Here's a love tap from that bag of bones, remember? And the girlfriend says, Oh, Joe, you are a real he-man after all. And two girls in the background say, He used to be so skinny. What a man. Well, so of course... Uh, and then Joe Atlas, or Charles Atlas says, I can make you a new man too in only 15 minutes a day. And it talks about either dynamic tension or, I don't know, uh, isotonic. So I got my, what do you call those? Cashier's checks from the local Quick Mart or whatever it was. And, um, uh, uh, ordered my, Charles Atlas, because there was a charge, it wasn't free, and started using that as a form of exercise. I, I mean, I don't know if it worked or how much I followed it or how long I did it, but I was mostly, at that age, I was, had been on the basketball team and uh, was exercising a lot with the uh, this was St. Paul's school. I was on the Cougars. From the fifth through the eighth grade, I was on the Cougars. I think I was number 23, maybe. I don't know. And then I was on the Hustlers team, number 34. I remember that. And we did pretty good in the Hustlers. We, I think it was second in the league one year. It was a lot of fun. You learn teamwork and discipline. And I used to sometimes really hate getting up in the morning on Saturday and going to practice and but it's it's a part of development and it was really you know looking back it was worthwhile I mean when I was in class before I joined uh they were talking about it and this kid behind me I even remember his name Bellinger get his first name he said uh oh you're tall you should you should join the team you know and I don't think he was on the team, but anyway, so I did, and, and, I'm, and I'm glad that I did. Um, and then I worked, I talked about my work at J.M. Fields, and I had uh, tried the rope exerciser, and how poor that was, how much of a piece of junk that was, but it was all TV advertising. I have a separate video on that. So working, you know, at J.M. Fields, you walk around a lot. You you don't really need to exercise. And same thing, I worked at a gas station. And again, a lot of walking. And, you know, I didn't really need to do separate exercise. But I did join a health spa when I was 18. And I'm glad I did. And I've, I've kept that up for years and years. Um, I haven't had it since I retired and, and, and during COVID. Uh, because I use a growing machine and a concept too, which is great. So I joined this health club and used to work out and meet people and talk to people and uh, it, it's it's worthwhile. In college now, I started since I didn't really work in a job that was physical. I would do sometimes jobs around the school where they needed help as part of student aid or pay for the bills. Uh, and part of the time I was still working at the gas station. I started out at a community college, so I was still working at that point in time. But when I was at uh, Florida Institute of Technology in Melbourne. I joined the crew team there, and that was really fun. I learned a lot. 
I uh, really got into good shape, and I loved the sport. It was just, uh, I loved winning a race, and I hated losing a race. And um, the teamwork, the the sheer joy of rowing is, it's almost, it was beautiful because we would row on a, well, at FIT, I guess it was a river, Creek Canal at FTU, Florida, and which was UCF. Then we rode on a lake, and that was really beautiful because it was uh, near some orange orchards, and it would smell of the beautiful orange blossoms during the, I guess it was the spring. But again, it was hard work. I'd have to get up super early and go out there and be half asleep and exercise but it was it was worthwhile I loved it I didn't do it all four years I was in an automobile accident and I had um, I had some sciatic problems and back problems and I um, got out of the row I mean I took some time off and I never got back into it so when I was not rowing I had to do some form of exercise so I did a lot of running and that was very um, well it's difficult if you're not a runner but you get in into running get used to it and it can be very enjoyable I mean there is a runner's high or there is a an enjoyment to running believe it or not and we used to also scuba dive and do stuff like that and also the you can't really fight your genetics I mean if you're you're built like a runner you're not going to be an Arnold Schwarzenegger and even then you know I think he used steroids I don't think that was natural and uh, you have to be careful what you put into your body regarding drugs and supplements it's not worth gambling so after after college I started working as an attorney uh, well first I was a COBOL computer programmer at Prudential in Jacksonville and of course you sit on your butt and it's a desk job and you have to do something to exercise if well if you want to stay in shape and it's also a great stress releaser and so I didn't really have an organized I, I mean I still went to the health spa and I didn't have much of a workout routine then in law school I, I was mostly running uh, again work out of the health club uh, but mostly running was a stress reducer, um, to keep in shape, but it, it's impo it was really important to reduce stress. So when I started working after law school uh, as an attorney, again, a desk job, you, you, you have to, you have to do something to prevent stress build up and to keep in shape, uh, otherwise you're you're, you're going to gain weight and it's then it snowballs into all kinds of health problems so I was also years ago started doing learning during that time period and then, then I was living in Pittsburgh then uh, and what I like about this area there's so much more opportunity uh, for whatever activities you're looking for. So I joined, uh, I started taking Tai Chi classes and Kung Fu and Karate and um, oh, I think there was a, some time I took uh, Japanese sword fighting. I can't even think of the name of what the class was. It was a different teacher. Uh, but I 
like I did the Tai Chi sword, which in fact is over my shoulder in the corner there. I still have my Tai Chi sword. I don't practice with that now. I, I still do Tai Chi. I try to do it every day or every other day or several times a day because you don't need much space and uh, it, it helps you with your memory. You've got to remember the routine. You've got to remember the movements and you can do it you know, when you're drunk, even you can do it when you're tired, you can do it when you're, and you don't need a large space. All you need is, a, is about a, a nine foot, eight foot by four foot area, maybe five by nine, something like that. And you can practice your 37 movement routine. I do the Chen Man Ching form of the Tai Chi Yang style, the, the short form. I, I learned the long form years ago, but I haven't kept up with that. I, the 37 movement is sufficient for me. When I really got into exercise I was doing my work as an attorney for Department of Interior was uh, litigation uh, empl employee employment <clears throat> litigation like discrimination um, EEOC MSPB work and it was very stressful a lot of uh, you know a lot of angry employees a lot of angry managers and and trial work it's, itself is, uh, uh, involves a lot of writing and research and, and then argument when you have an actual trial. So it, it, that, that's all very stressful. So what I found was that I would work out of this health club nearby, well, right across the street from where I work. Uh, and uh, my routine was I would... Uh, I would uh, lift weights, free weights for machines, I'd do some stretching, uh, that for a total of maybe 20, 30 minutes. And then I would do um, the elliptical machine. I don't remember what style it was, pre-core maybe. And the machines they had there were really nice quality. I've tried a whole lot of ellipticals and this pre-core, I think it was, it was much better than than any other ones that I had used. So I would I would use the elliptical, I would listen to music, and, and I've talked about music in another video and about uh, the playlists that I have and the songs that I listen to. You have to get songs that are, um, there's a science to it. You have to get songs with a certain beat per minute, and I don't remember what it is. But if you get the songs with the, the higher beats per minute, uh, you can really um, exercise much better. So my routine was the the weights, the stretches, and then the uh, elliptical with the music. And I would usually read a book at the same time uh, on my cell phone. And that was just really really a great stress release i love i love doing it and uh it keeps you in good shape now sometimes it's hard to start exercising because you're tired and you don't want to so you have to i would drink coffee and take um ginseng like this one right here american ginseng slices they, uh, these are from Wisconsin, and you can take this every day. You, you have these little slices here that you chew on one or two of those 30 minutes before you exercise. And if you take too much, like four or five of them, you're, you're going to have trouble sleeping at night. So that's your limit. So you drink coffee, take ginseng, and I've tried other supplements, uh, you know, the pre-workout supplements. and they're, they're, They would help. Although, again, you have to be cautious what you put in your body. You, you know, it's not, they're not, the FDA does not 
protect you as they do with drugs with supplements so just stick with something natural that's been around for years and years caffeine and ginseng american ginseng korean ginseng is more medicinal and you can't take it every day and i'm trying cordyceps uh, and other supplements but I, I stick to these two and so i did that for years and years the the exercise the elliptical and and now i do the rowing machine once or twice or three times a day watching a movie generally because if you don't watch a movie or listen to the music uh, you now with the rowing machine i can't read at the same time which so i prefer the elliptical but i don't have one uh, because you can read as well as listen to music or watch TV. But with the rowing machine, I watch TV. So I have to find good movies, which are hard to find. And especially, you know, for exercise, you wouldn't want something like uh, war movies or something that's not real slow-paced romance. <sighs> ah, one of the most important things about... exercise well two things i think i've left out uh i got involved in it's called international latin dancing and there were five dances so i joined this teacher club studio and where they teach you how to how to do the dances latin dances uh and the international latin dances there's an, another style out there i forget what it's called but the international style has the uh, rumba, the samba, the jive, the cha-cha, and the paso doble. And, <laughs> boy, it's it's so much fun. And, you know, after doing karate and, and kung fu, uh, listening to music and dancing with women is much better. <laughs> I just loved it. Now, I, I didn't do a lot of dancing the, the salsa at clubs and cha-cha at clubs. I didn't do a lot of that. I, I, I didn't really like that scene too much. Uh, but I really loved the, the Latin dancing. I, boy, I recommend that for anybody and everybody, especially you learn to move differently. And you can tell if you look at somebody who studied dancing, how they walk and move. And if you want to if you want to meet women or pick up women, man, start doing some Latin dancing when you're 12 years old. And it's gold. It's golden. <laughs> <clears throat> I wish I had done that. I, I was much older, 35 or 30. I don't know when I started uh, the, the, the dancing, the Latin dancing. Um... Oh, back to the martial arts. Now, one thing they teach you in the martial, martial arts that's really important is the, the concept of, of actually being aware of your surroundings at all times and avoiding a fight. You know, we grew up in the John Wayne culture where you, and especially in the South, you know, you have that culture of pride and, uh, you know, somebody insults you, you can shoot them in the head. I mean, that's that's not current society, but that goes back a hundred years. I mean, you, you you know, pride is everything in the South. And, uh, uh, you know, John Wayne wasn't going to put up with any bullying like Charles Atlas talks about. But in the martial arts, they teach you to look at the world differently. I mean, you protect yourself if you have to, and you protect your family if you have to, and you have to know how to do that. But they also teach you to avoid a situation. For example, I found, uh, this is interesting, uh, this is an obituary from January 10, 1999. And I had started studying martial arts earlier, I mean, than that, like 92, 93 maybe 90 and um, the significance of this obituary it's the guy's name is Florendo M. Visitacion here's the obituary
But it ends the it ends the last paragraph. Last uh, yeah, last paragraph. He says, Mister Visicon's teachings went beyond physical movement involving comportment and behavior. Quote. For well, for instance, he once said, quote. If on a subway someone pushes you or sprawls across two seats, you should not appear as if it mattered. Understand the person's problem and walk away. Confronting the person or even beating him up will not educate or reform him, nor is it our place to do so. Now, <laughs> that reminds me, <laughs> I don't know if I've talked about this in prior videos, but, you know, every, everybody talks about bullying these days. When I was a kid, I got into fist fights and broke my glasses, and, and, uh, uh, and I remember one time, this kid kept harassing me, and I don't know what his story was. So one time I started hitting him and chasing him. And finally I I got him and, and beat him up and knocked him down. And I was kneeling on top of him, I think, just punching him. This was, I mean, this was at this Catholic school. I was, uh, boy, this was fifth grade maybe. And... Uh, <laughs> And a police car would drove right by, and they got out and and and, and said uh, stop that or something along those lines. I remember standing up, and my knees were literally knocking uh, in fear and in uh, you know I I don't know what it is insulin or whatever that fight or flight response is, but. I was really surprised at my physical response to that, and uh, nothing ever happened. I mean, he didn't, he just broke up the fight, and and uh, the kid ran off, and of course, he never bothered me again. I guess my point is, is that when you're bullied uh, as a kid, you need to fight back. I, I fully believe that, you know, people use, they also use humor to fight back, and in fact, there's, there's quite a few articles by, I think it's both Seinfeld and uh, Chris Rock, where they talk about how they they use humor to fight bullying, and that's how they became rich and famous. And they don't really condemn bullying. They say that's a part of life, and I, I, I'm not sure they're wrong. I, I think modern culture is, is wrong about the bullying. I think they need to tell you to stand up for yourself. I remember when I was in the fight, my mom, she went to the nun and said, what should we do? And the nun said, well, teach him, take him to boxing classes. And she said, oh, no, no, they, they have to turn the other cheek. And I, I thought mom was wrong about that. And uh, the nun was right. We didn't take boxing classes, of course. She would not have condoned it. But I think culture has gone too far in trying to protect it. Everybody's a damn victim. And, uh, you know, you have to have, as I've said before, you have to have gratitude and appreciation and aspirations. And if you're always a victim... How are you going to have either aspirations or gratitude? You're just going to be angry. Anyway, I'm off topic. The other thing that I learned about exercise was don't overdo it. When I was injured in an automobile accident and I quit rowing, I did have problems with sciatic, low back pain, and some knee problem. And if I pushed it too hard or started exercising too soon against doctor's orders, it was always a problem. So never exercise, never stretch uh, into pain. Don't do it. Take ibuprofen, uh, let it quiet down, and then go back into it. And, and get physical therapy. I, I went to 
I don't know, probably 10 different types of physical therapists and finally found one who had some really broad range experience in uh, a lot of different types of um, healing. And, and she was really effective. Uh, I also went to a doctor, a Korean doctor who was, uh, did acupuncture and he could cure just about anything. Uh, he got rid of my uh, knee pain, back pain, and sciatic pain. And, but I but I, what I learned was to do stretches. There, there's about five, six stretches that I do every day. Well, I try to. I end up sometimes doing them a couple times a week. But uh, there, there are like hamstring stretches, um, stretches for the piriformis muscle in the buttocks, stretches for like the... What do they call that? The cat stretch, where you're stretching your back. Um, other types of lower pelvic uh, exercise uh, stretches, and um, a couple others, and they really are very effective in preventing sciatic pain, lower back pain, etc. The other thing that goes with the uh, healing of the body and exercise is, of course, diet. And you have to have a good diet. You, uh, I mean, I try to follow a low glycemic diet, so that means no bread other than some specific uh, high whole grain pumpernickel made in Germany is the only bread I'll eat. I mean, sometimes I'll... I'll have some pretzel chips or pita chips with hummus just because they're so damn good, uh, which, which reminds me of another story. So when I was studying exercise and so forth, I would go on to YouTube. And YouTube is great for anything and everything, but there's a guy there. Uh, he's still on YouTube. He's really built well, and, and uh, it, it, he's, he has a very interesting story. I think it's under the name of Scooby. Yeah, just do a Google search or do a YouTube search of Scooby bodybuilding. And, uh, <laughs> but he, <laughs> one of the videos he had, uh, he was standing there and he had a bag of, potato chips or Pringles or something and he put it in his mouth and started chewing and he said if it tastes good spit it out that's bodybuilding that's all bodybuilding is I'm like <laughs> that's not for me <laughs> yes you have to be disciplined and uh you know, you you can't fight genetics. I mean, he has good genetics, and you're not going to be a bodybuilder uh, if you don't have the genetics. Now, I will say that one of the health spas that I was going to had this professional bodybuilder, and good God, it was absolutely, it was like looking at a Greek god. If you've never seen a real body, and I'm talking about the the true full bodybuilder that he, he would pose, people would ask him to pose, you know, and he'd, he'd have the, like, bikini underwear. He would pose, and it was truly awesome. I mean, it was just a beautiful, it was amazing. And, uh, uh, but to do that, I mean, it's just such strict diet and, and, and you know, exercise. And uh, I would be sure, of, uh, you know, that they did steroids. I don't think that is possible naturally. But it's mostly genetics, number one, and steroids, number two, diet, number two as well. So the low glycemic load diet, and I, you know, they, if bodybuilders can't drink alcohol, what the hell? That's, I mean, <laughs> what's life about other than you know, finding things that you enjoy in life. I enjoy a good 
drink. I enjoy a good bourbon and a good margarita, a good beer. I make my own beer. I'm going to have to do a video on that. But anyway, to, to the, the supplements I would recommend for the heart is uh, L-lysine and L-proline. There's a book out, the guy's name is Dr. Rath, R-A-T-H, and uh, it's been out for years and years and years, and um, the, the maintenance level is 1,000 milligrams of L-proline and 2,000 milligrams of L-lysine. If you have clogged arteries, then of course you double, triple that. But I've been taking that for years and years. And finally, when I had to, had to do a heart cath for a, before a surgery oh, four years ago, um, the doctor was shocked. He goes, "You, it's unbelievable. You're, you have no clogged arteries at all. It's like you're 18 years old. I said, well, it's from the proline and lysine. He goes, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And uh, so... You know, that's, and lysine also uh, prevents cold sores, and it, it, it uh, is anti, was it virus or bacterial? It's even a, a treatment now the, for COVID. I mean, part of a regimen of natural treatments for COVID. It's not a sole treatment for COVID, but it, it helps protect and prevent problems. <clears throat> Uh, but you have to take those on an empty stomach. Amino acids you don't take with any other food. It has to be on an empty stomach. An hour, I mean, completely empty stomach. An hour or two after and an hour or two before a meal. Otherwise, it's not going to work as well. Um, so, in summary, exercise depends on genetics it depends on the work you have if you work outside you know you you don't have a need for exercise but you can turn exercise into enjoyment with latin dancing with music and elliptical and really enhance your life i hope that you find this video helpful these are things that I've learned over the years, and uh, they they really work. They're they're good ideas.